say, I thought we were here to let our voices be heard. My name is Matt Johnson, and if you all could do me a favor and please stay on this side of the concrete uh, to avoid traffic problems and other things and for your safety, uh, that would be appreciated. Uh, welcome! So here we are, standing together in all 50 states, not all are at their capitals, but at this very moment in time, there should be a similar rally in all 50 states. I know some of you have driven up from Miami, from Jacksonville. Thank you all for making the trip and standing to tell our government that our rights are not given to us by them. They are given to us by birth, protected by the Constitution. So what I would like to do is I'm going to give the mic to Buck. We're going to open with an invocation. And then we're going to have a young lady with a very beautiful voice come sing the national anthem for us. You are absolutely welcome to join in if you would like. Then we'll do the Pledge of Allegiance. And we will have a moment of silence for the victims of senseless murder. We're changing the narrative because it was the heart, the evil heart, that took all of those lives. So we will give them a moment of silence. And then I will give, uh, I will read a speech that is unified in all 50 states from the NCCPA, and then we have a great list of speakers. Uh, we are here from 2 to 5. If we last that long, if we have enough to go, then great. If not, we will hang out. We'll get the crowd involved if you all want to come up and speak. Keep it peaceful. Keep it lawful. That's all I ask, everybody. Let's show them that we're not the evil monsters that they portray us to be. USA. Thank you all for coming. If I could get you to move your hats while I give today's invocation. Our Heavenly Father, we call upon you today, give you the thanks and the glory for allowing us all to be here today. We thank you for the freedoms you've allowed us. Thank you, dear God, for the great nation in which we live. Thank you, dear God, for the service men and women in our military who helped keep this nation safe. And we pray, dear God, that you keep those safe that were deployed. I pray, God, that you guide the leaders of this nation to keep the Constitution safe and that you keep the loving hand over the Commander-in-Chief as he strives to make this nation great again. Dear God, we give the thanks and glory all to you, for it's in Jesus' name I pray. Amen. 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 And now if you would all stand and face the flag. Hands over your heart, you all know the deal. We're uh, the American side of this, so. Uh, <laughs> Veterans, uh, it is now legal. If you would like, you may render the proper salute. And I now pronounce, uh, pre present to you, Jada Renee. Sorry. <laughs> okay. Oh, say, can you see? By the dawn's early light, what so proudly we hailed at the twilight's last gleaming, whose broad stripes and bright stars through the perilous fight or the
And now, if you would, place your hands over your heart and we will do the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. And now, if you would, out of respect for those who have lost their lives, both the good guys with the guns and those who were victims of senseless murder, let's take a moment of silence. Thank you, everybody. Some of you guys were not over there um, at Clayman Plaza when we when I did a short brief, uh, but most of you all know that the Patriot Movement has many many faces, many names, many patches, many banners. You all know it. We all know, and and until now, they've had the same ideals missions, goals, to protect the Constitution and support the Constitution against all enemies, foreign and domestic. Most of us are former Leo, current Leo, former veterans, or, excuse me, veterans, former military. We took oaths to defend the Constitution. Uh, David Clayton, some of you know from 3% Republic, some of you don't know or didn't know until recently, uh, he had a vision uh, that started probably three years ago when he first became really involved in the Patriot Movement of uniting the Patriot Movement, even if it's for one day, for the sole purpose of standing up for the Constitution. And it's now time, and here we are. You know, There's never been 3% United Patriots, 3% American Patriots, 3% Republic, 3%ers Originals, you name it, all working together for the same goal. And here we are today, standing side by side, standing up for what's right. That's right. So as, as the point of contact and the organizer for the state of Florida on behalf of the NCCPA, uh, I'm going to read the unified speech that is going to be given on behalf of the NCCPA in all 50 states. Some had to change their time because there were already permitted events. Some had to change their location because their governments decided to slap them with $7,000 for security fees. But the fact remains that we are all united in all 50 states today to tell our government that our rights don't come from the piece of paper called the Constitution. They were come from our Creator and they are protected by the Constitution. As American citizens, we have more rights and freedoms than any other group of people in the world. The founders of this country established these freedoms because they had previously lived in countries where the people didn't have as many rights. One of these rights is stated in the Second Amendment to the Constitution, which proclaims that the right of the people to keep and bear arms shall not be infringed. But over the years, various laws and regulations have infringed upon this right. The reasons for these laws are to get the guns that cause crime and injuries off the streets. But most of these laws have only prevented the common citizen from acquiring a firearm. There should be some regulation with regards to who can own a gun, but we need to ensure that this regulation is done in a fair and practical manner. The best argument for the protection of the right to possess arms is the Second Amendment. 
The purpose of the amendment and the entire constitution is to protect natural born rights that cannot be abolished or changed by our government. Amen. Amen. Yeah. But the wording of the amendment has always been a source of debate as of lately. The main argument is that the amendment only provides for a militia and the right to keep and bear arms is referring to militia members only. But the amendment also states that it is the right of the people Amen. to keep and bear arms. Yeah. 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 And in 1990, that question was answered in the Supreme Court case, United States versus Verdugo Urquidez. This case was about a man who had committed a crime while in Mexico. The man argued his constitutional rights had been violated. But the court ruled that since he was outside the United States, when the crime was committed, he was not protected. During the, the case, the question of what the right of the people meant in the Constitution. The court decided that the people, protected by the Fourth Amendment, and by the First and Second Amendments, and to whom rights and powers are reserved in the Ninth and Tenth Amendments, refer to a class of persons who are part of a national community. This decision clearly shows that the right to keep and bear arms is not exclusive of the militia, but applies to all United States citizens. Another argument is that the Second Amendment does not prohibit national and state governments from passing laws that regulate or even ban the selling of certain guns. But the amendment states that the right to keep guns shall not be infringed. This would imply that any action that would eliminate guns or their restriction or would restrict ownership to a very small section of the population would be unconstitutional. But there are numerous states, we know them, California, Maryland, New York, Connecticut, that have banned certain types of guns, including so-called assault weapons and handguns. These types of laws do not just limit who can purchase a firearm, but they make it illegal for all citizens to own guns. Under the amendment, this is a violation of the Constitution. Although there is heated argument over the Constitution, most all citizens will agree that there should be some sort of restriction on who should be able to purchase and carry a firearm. The law varies from state to state, but there is a set of federal statutes that apply to all states. The, gun, the, the most important of these statutes is the outline of what classes of people are prohibited from purchasing firearms. They include convicted felons, fugitives from justice, unlawful users of certain drugs, and persons committed to mental institutions, illegal aliens, and persons less than 18 years old. Even strict anti-gun control proponents realize that these types of people should not own guns. We also agree with most of the other federal statutes with regards to who is able to buy, sell, and use firearms. Where there is dispute over the Omnibus Crime Bill and the Brady Bill, plus many more unconstitutional legislations being introduced. The omnibus bill so -called bans so-called assault weapons. The Brady Bill imposes a mandatory five-day waiting period on the sale of handguns. These types of laws do not only restrict firearm ownership to law-abiding citizens, but they make it hard or even impossible for these citizens to access certain types of weapons. And as we discussed before, any restriction on the right for citizens to per possess firearms is unconstitutional. In addition to the federal statutes, each state has its own regulations with regards to firearms. These range from states with almost no regulation, such as Wyoming, Alaska, and New Hampshire, to states like California and Connecticut that have very restrictive measures. As with any other issue, the individual state has the right to pass its own laws. But some of these restrictions are not simply restrictions. They are all out bans on firearms. 
In Washington, D.C., for example, it's illegal to sell handguns and semi-automatic weapons, including shotguns or rifles. If a city is allowed to directly violate the Second Amendment by banning guns, what other amendments can legally be violated by these cities? Will the next step be to restrict the press or oppress certain religions? Obviously, this will probably not happen, but you can see the impact that local interpretation of the Constitution could have. The idea behind these laws is that by imposing more gun restrictions, we will be able to reduce the amount of crime in this country. Right? <laughs> the most common form of gun control is the imposition of bans or waiting periods. But what gun control proponents don't realize is that these bans and waiting periods, they don't do anything to deter who they were designed for. The criminal. This is because people who use... This is because people who use the guns in crimes don't go to licensed dealers to purchase firearms. A survey of sample of inmates of juvenile correctional facilities and inner city high school students found that a large majority of them got their guns from friends or family. Or from other criminals. Another survey of prison inmates found that four-fifths of them felt that they could get a firearm after their release from prison. Four out of five Shadows. said that they could get a gun as a felon after they got out of prison. In addition, these criminals stated that if handguns were not available, they would just turn to other types of guns. Although this research does not prove that guns are uncontrollable, it does show that criminals can get their guns, their hands on guns whenever and wherever they want. The laws will only impede those who follow the law from acquiring firearms for their defense. Now, gun control advocates often point out that using a gun for self-defense is not a good use, excuse me, it's not a good argument for owning a gun. They feel that self-defense does not occur often enough to warrant owning guns for that person. This may seem a reasonable argument. Until you look at the facts. Nationwide surveys show the citizens use firearms and self-defense against crime 2.1 to 2.5 million times each year. A nationwide survey showed that citizens use firearms and self-defense against crime 2.1 to 2.5 million times each year and they use handguns in 1.5 to 1.9 million of those cases. In comparison, firearms are used in approximately only 238,000 robberies and only 14,000 murders each year. Go figure, right? This would mean that people use guns in self-defense almost 10 times more than guns are used in crimes. Since criminals can get guns no matter what bans or restrictions are in effect, the only number of people such regulations will actually affect would be the number of self-defense cases. As we've seen, guns are used in a large number of crimes, but how can we reduce the amount of guns used in committing crime while at the same time keeping intact the rights of the common citizen? One of the ways would be to require everyone who wishes to purchase a gun to take and pass a gun safety course. Many states that allow concealed weapons require this type of test before issuing the permits. This would be a one-time test that would involve a background check and potential gun buyer 
buyer would then receive a card similar to a driver's license that they would present to the gun dealer. Under that type of system, there would be no waiting systems and no bans on certain type of guns. But still, another program putting restrictions on your God-given constitutionally protected rights. Most people agree that some sort of gun control from the hands of criminals or the insane is a good thing. Guns can be dangerous in the wrong hands and should be kept out of the wrong hands. But the Second Amendment provides a clear statement on what government position with regards to gun control should be. But the regulations now are starting to conflict with that amendment. This would be a reasonable argument. If crime had been drastically reduced by these restrictions. But that is simply not the case. The only effect gun controls have are to punish the common citizen. There should be some restrictions as to who should purchase a firearm, not what types of firearms one can purchase. This would ensure that criminals are left out, but the people who are legally able to can have no restrictions on their rights. Thank you all for standing up here today to show the left and the mainstream media who vilify every law-abiding gun owner as the problem. Right. That's right. Thank you. And now our next speaker will be Mike Hill from Jacksonville. Thanks, sir. You patriots came from all over Florida here today to show your love and respect for the United States of America. Yeah. Is there not a cause? Yes. There was an army that squared off against each other. Israel on one side and the Philistines on another. The Philistines had their champion, Goliath, and a young David walked up to face that army and said, is there not a cause? Who is this that would dare defy the army of the living God? You come at me with sword and shield. Today I come at you in the name of the Lord. Now feed your carcass to the birds. And David slew that giant. And there was a great victory that day. And then the Lord God uttered his voice and said, children, go where I send thee and build me a nation where my people can worship me freely in spirit and in truth. And people from all over the world heard that voice and came to these shores and began building this great nation. And God shed his grace on thee. And the nation began to grow and prosper. And the Lord said, make the vision plain and write it on tablets. Make this declaration that all men are created equal and endowed by their creator with certain inalienable rights, among which are life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. And government is instituted to secure those rights, receiving their just powers from the governed. And those early founding fathers sealed that declaration with this cause, that we pledge our lives, our fortune, our sacred honor, and a great war was fought, and the Patriots were victorious. And God said, codify it, write it in a constitution, that we the people of the United States, in order to form a more perfect union, establish justice, ensure domestic tranquility, provide for the common defense, promote the general welfare, and secure the blessings of liberty for ourselves and our posterity, do ordain and establish this Constitution for the United States of America. Amen. 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 Is there not a cause? In that 
Constitution, our rights were spelled out. And in the Bill of Rights, our inalienable rights, all ten of them, are God-given rights. They do not come from man, they come from God. Which, because they come from God, man has no right to touch them. They have no authority to touch them. It comes from God, including our Second Amendment, which says the right to bear arms shall not be infringed. That's why we're here today. Is there not a cause? Just recently, in Florida, a law was passed which infringed upon our rights. Unfortunately, the elected officials who put that law into place forgot their oath. Yep. Their oath said, and I know because I took the oath, and veterans out here, you will recognize this oath, that I do solemnly swear to protect and defend the Constitution of the United States against all enemies, foreign and domestic, and to bear true faith and allegiance to the same. And I take that oath without any mental reservation or purpose of evasion. Well, our elected officials, not all of them, but enough of them, forgot that oath that they took. And they forgot that that oath that they took was not between them and a person administering that oath, or even them and their constituents. That oath was between them and a living God. That I do solemnly swear that I will protect and defend this Constitution. Amen. Veterans who are out here. Once you left the military, nobody absolved you from that oath. It is a lifetime oath. I, for one, will stand up for that oath to protect and defend the Constitution of the United States. It is what has made this nation so great, so powerful, the most prosperous, blessed, benevolent nation the world has ever seen because of that document. So is there not a cause? Yeah. I commit to you this, that when I get elected again this November, I am going to file legislation that is going to repeal the parts of that law which infringed upon our rights. Why? Because I took an oath to protect and defend it. And part of that oath means I must stand up and fight for it. Thank you, Patriots, for coming out today. God bless you, and God bless America, land that I love. John Hallman. Good afternoon, everybody. Good afternoon. My name's John Hallman, and I'm with the Liberty First Network. We're a grassroots organization that come up here during session and fight for liberty and freedom, and we need to get more people like Mike Hill back up here, so be in support Mike. Uh, but I, I came up here, I'm, I'm also very proud to be on the Bob White for Governor team. Bob desperately wanted to be here today, but Bob is not funded with a with millions of dollars and in a political and a pack and being flown around the state like the other candidates. Bob is a hardworking man. He has a day job and he gets out off of work and he gets in his car and he travels around the state of Florida to deliver the message of freedom and liberty. So he's not he can't be in two places at one time. But he really wanted to be here. But I do want to talk just briefly for a couple of minutes about leadership and what's going to happen in the next election. It is probably the most important election. I know we say that every every two to four years, but this is going to be an important election this year. And the primary on August 28th is going to decide who is going to run this place behind us here in this building here in the Florida legislature and in, most importantly in the governor's mansion. The enemy is at the gates. They're, they feel strengthened. And they think that they, they've got this election in the bag. Do you think they have this election in the bag? Do you think they're going to take our guns? They think they are, but we're not going to let that happen. But what we do need, 
we need we need a we need strong leadership to somebody who will champion our as, as Matt said our God-given constitutional rights. Not only God-given, not only is it in the U.S. Constitution, it's in the Florida Constitution. So this should not be complicated. Section 8 of the Florida Constitution provides the right of the people to keep and bear arms in defense of themselves. So this, you know, it is God-given, it's U.S. Constitution, and it's a state constitution. But let's talk about this past session. As Mike just mentioned, we had a large failure of leadership. SB 726, 7026, the so-called school safety bill passed and took away uh, 18 and 19 and 20 year olds' rights to own and bear arms. The very same people that we can send to war to sacrifice their life for our country. They have a right. Their rights were taken away by that bill. So how did the other candidates for governor react to this? Well, first of all, it took them several weeks to, to respond because you know what they had to do? They had to read it. They had to get their consultants out. They had to get a, uh, a uh, get a poll out on the streets to find out. They had to get a public, they had to get a forum to try to decide, what do I say, what do I say? But let me tell you something, Bob White, he took one second. When that bill was filed, he put out that he was adamantly against this bill and that he opposed this bill and this bill should never pass. He didn't take several weeks to talk to consultants. A real leader doesn't have to wait. They know what's in their heart. Another candidate, when, when asked, when another candidate was asked for governor, you know what he said? They asked him, they said, what will you do as governor about SB 7026? You know what he said? He said, well, as the governor, it's my duty to enforce the law. What? No, sir. No, sir. It's your duty. As Mike said, it's your duty to protect the Constitution, to protect people's God-given rights. That's your duty. That's your duty. And that's what Mike will do. Mike, Mike will get a bill, and I'll guarantee you, a Governor Bob White will sign that bill. He will fight for that bill. He won't talk to consultants. He won't wait to see what the polls say. He knows what's right. So this, this election, you have a choice. August 28th is the primary. You'll have a choice. You can choose a candidate, one or two or three of the candidates, who will, who will wait to see what the right thing is to do, and they'll consult with all their consultants. Or you can elect somebody like Bob White, who will say, when it comes to championing the rights of yours, and if anybody says we're going to take anybody's guns away, he's going to say, hell no. Hell no, that's not going to happen under his administration. There is, you know what they say, you know what they'll tell you up here? They'll say, they'll say, John, Bob, you don't understand. Politics is the art of compromise. You have to compromise to get something done. That's the way it is. But you know what? Once you compromise, once you compromise your natural rights, then you just embolden and, and strengthen the enemies of freedom and liberty. And they will come out as stronger. We never compromise. And I can guarantee you, Governor Bob White will never compromise. And you know what else he'll have? He'll have a veto pen. And any bill that comes across that even looks like it might take away our rights to own and bear arms, that bill will be, be, will be vetoed immediately. So I appreciate your, the opportunity to come here. Uh, Please go to BobForFlorida.com because with you, he, he's getting, he's traveling the state. More and more people are signing up. We can, we can get Bob elected, and he will be your champion for, for your right to own and bear arms. So go to BobForFlorida.com and join the fight, and we can win this fight. And thank you all for what you do, for standing strong and for being here. And we'll never back down. Thank you. Awesome. Next up, we have Dexter Sanders. He's a pastor. Oh, come on. Clap your hands, y'all. We're supposed to be making some noise out here. Hallelujah. My, my name is Dexter Sanders. I'm from Orlando, Florida. I direct a movement called Back to God. And not only that, I, I direct an organization called Reclaiming Florida for Christ. And so anytime I get a chance to speak, I got to make sure I know who's in the audience. And so here's how I can find out. Let's see. Clap your hands if you love the United States of America. 
that, that was pretty good. That was pretty good. How about this one? Clap your hands if you love the United States Constitution. All right, it's getting better. As I like to say, it's getting gooder and gooder. Okay, how about this one? Clap your hands if you love God Almighty and our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. See, now I know I'm in the right place. I thought I was in the right place, but now I know for certain that I'm in the right place. Because how many of you know that it takes both God and Constitution? It takes both God and Constitution. Matter of fact, let me, let me just share a little word of God with you. It says over in James uh, uh, chapter 1, verse 25, here's what it says. But he who looks into the perfect law of liberty and continues in it and is not a, for, a, a forgetful hearer, but a doer of the work, this one will be blessed in what he does. Did you get that? He says, 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 those that looked into the perfect law of liberty and continue in it, that means don't back down. That, 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 that means when the Goliath is trying to destroy the David, we don't back down. And we're here today because we're not ready to back down from Goliath. We are the Davids that are going to take our constitution and make it work for God's people the way it's supposed to work. See, see. See, that's why we're here today. We're here. We're gathered today in the great state of Florida under, under God in a great constitution to do what we are called to do. See, this is our job. This is what we're supposed to do when our constitution is being threatened. There's a, there's a great patriot by the name of Adam Weiss. Here's what he says. Here's this quote. He says, uh, there has been some misguided sense of public good misguided sense of public good. And he said that in reference to the changing of the Florida gun laws. Misguided uh, public good. And so I'm here to say that the, 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 the careless and knee-jerk uh, band-aid type of bill has now become law in Florida. It's become law in Florida. And, and I'm here to say, who in the world do they think they are? I mean, I mean, I'm serious. Like, who do they think they are? That they can take our Constitution, twist it and turn it for their own good. And so we, the people in here today, have to say no more. Say no more. No. And the crazy thing about it is, is the, the, the very men and women who swore oaths on the Bible itself to support, to protect, to defend the Constitution and the government of the United States of America and the state of Florida have failed you. That they failed us. Fire them. I'm with you, brother. Fire them. They got to go. And matter of fact, we have to make sure that this type of attitude does not leave Florida and go to Washington, D.C. Oh, I said something right now. We got to make sure that this kind of, this kind of p -p politician, this kind of, this kind of thinking does not leave Florida where it has infested us this way and makes its way to, 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 to Washington, D.C. where it can be spread out 50 states. And guess what? You and I are here today to say no more. Say no more. No more. See, see, I hear it all the time. You guess what I hear all the time? I hear time all the time. I hear, uh, but, but, how does it fail us? And I, and I hear stuff like, I, 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 is, is it really such a big deal? And I'm here to say, really? I mean, I mean, think about it. It's simple, folks. These lawmakers have decided that the best way to make our young people safe is to deprive them of their Second Amendment rights to bear arms. I mean, that's the best thing they can come up with. Uh, in order to make them safe, let's take away from them. Let's make them unsafe. Let's make it so that they cannot protect themselves. It just nerves me that the very young men and women can go into the armed service at 18 years old, fight for our country, but they can't come back to their country and buy a weapon. Well, well, what kind of country is this? That's a trick of the enemy. This right was granted to them. By God Almighty, under our under our under our Constitution, and, and the, it, it, listen, this is a big deal. If you're somebody out there that is thinking that it's not a big deal, maybe you're not a part of the solution, but the problem. 
See, because if they can move and do these things on a, on a bill like this, guess what? They can continue over and over again, take away your constitutional rights, and you and I have to stand here today and say no more. Patriots, brothers and sisters, I stand before you humbly right now. Because you know what? We've seen that the, the evil histories of authoritarian government in this past. And we know how it acts, right? It comes in, and the first thing it does is it takes away our guns. Then the next thing it does is it takes away our speech. And then the next thing you know, we're living in oppression. Communism. Sounds like communism to me. And, and so I've had an opportunity to, 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 to walk and survey the land. Oh, I have. I've had an opportunity to go up and down the, the coast of Florida, in and out of churches, in and out of tea parties. I love the tea party, y'all. I'm just saying. In and out of other uh, 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 political organizations. And as I've gone through the churches and I've gone through the tea parties, I was there to encourage God's people that it's time for God's people to stand up for God and to stand up for our Constitution. See, see, the fact of the matter is, if it's not us, who? And if it's not now, when? How long are we going to sit back and watch this, this big government, this, this establishment government, continue to take away from us what our forefathers died and granted us in our rights? Say no more! Say no more! And as I walk as, and I travel, I'm like, listen, guys, we gotta get up. Listen, pastors, you gotta raise up in the spirit of the Black Road Regiment. You gotta be ready to go out and fight. And you gotta be ready to take office and go out and be elected. After all, how can we expect the heathens to do God's work? Why do we keep sitting back watching ungodly people operate our business and, and, and expect that they're going to do something godly on our behalf? See, see, the Constitution is godly. How can we expect somebody to, to render unto the Constitution the, the, the God-given rights that's given to us and they're not even godly themselves? And so, so, so as I surveyed the land and I looked out and I saw them like, you got to come, you got to run, you got to do this. And every time I've, I've, I've met time and time again with reluctance. And that's why my brothers and sisters, I'm standing on these steps today and I'm telling you I've got a call from God. And my call from God is to be your next U.S. Senator in D.C. representing the state of Florida. We're going to take God Almighty into D.C. I said we're going to take God Almighty into D.C. I know it's big. My brother talked about it. It's like David fighting Goliath. Goliath is big. He has all these interest groups. Goliath is big. He has all this money. But guess what? We got something Goliath does not have. We got God Almighty as the wind beneath our wings. And just like he delivered David to victory, he will lead you and I to victory. If we will stand up today and say no more. If we will say no more. Say no more. God bless you. God bless the United States of America. <laughs> Dexter Sanders, everybody. All right, next up, Colonel Mike McAllister, retired, candidate for AG Commissioner. Boy, I tell you what, I used to live in Tallahassee. And uh, I didn't see many crowds gathering like this when I was up here. I, can, I, I, I do not remember that ever happening. I know that you all came from all over the state of Florida. And you are here to clearly send a message to the left and the New World Order liberals that you ain't taking our country away from our future generations. seeing a lot of hats and a lot of signs, so I want to hear anyone here that's a military veteran, would you please raise your hand and shout? Let me 
me ask this question. Anyone here that believes, regardless of what the media and the left say, this is one nation under God, would you raise your hand and shout? You know, as I look around, I'm just curious. If you are in a tea party or a 912, would you raise your hand and shout? If you're in a 3% group, would you raise your hand and shout? All right, there's about three other groups. I don't know if we'll have any, but we'll see. Does anybody here have a bike or a motorcycle? Would you raise your hand and shout? Does anybody here have a gun? Would you raise your hand and shout? And is there anybody here, maybe we have one or two, that do own an American flag, and will you raise your hand and shout? i tell you what, my friends, we will never let them take away our First Amendment right to proudly wear and, fla and wave that American flag. And they want to take it out of our schools, they now want to take it out of our communities, and we're simply not going to allow that to happen. Now, my friends, we looked this year in 2018, and I know a lot of us up here on the stage are, are running for office, and like he said, I'm running for Commissioner of Agriculture, but what I am also very concerned about is 2018 in November. And we must make sure that in August we put candidates on the ballots that can energize the voter base. The, de the Democrats and the liberals know, and if you're a Democrat, I'm going to ask you to vote for what's best for this country in November. We are not going to let them take Florida away. And we're going to make sure that we put people in the state house, like my friend Mike Hill. Where'd you go, Mike? And give him more support so that we can get legislation passed that will protect our monuments, that will protect our rights of the Second Amendment, that will protect our freedom of religion and our freedom of speech. Now, my friends, that's on us. And we're the ones that have to make sure that that happens. And let me say this as well. Regardless of all this rhetoric that we hear, and I know we're in a blue town in a blue county, but this is not a blue state. And regardless of all this rhetoric you hear, my friends, don't ever have any doubt about it. You are the backbone of this country. You are the backbone of America. You have value. You are important. You are worthy. They want to take away your pride and your heritage. Don't let it happen. Don't ever believe. Look around today. What do we got? 1,000, 2,000 people standing here right now. You are never in this fight alone. They want to try to divide us and conquer us, but it's not going to happen. Look around you. You always have friends and a community and a state and a nation that when this going gets tough, we will rise up. We will refuse to let this be taken away. Now, my friends, when we think about what's going on in America today, they want to take down our monuments. They want to destroy our heritage. They want to take away what was built by your parents and grandparents and great-grandparents, and we're not going to let them to do it. And next year, we need Florida to pass a law to protect all of our war memorials like they have in other states. And my friends, we all know, and we start looking at the data, the cities with the strictest gun controls have the highest crime rates. It's not the law-abiding American citizens with guns that commit the crimes. It's the criminals with the guns that commit the crimes. And if we let them take away our guns, the only people that will have a gun will be the government and the criminals, and it's not going to happen. 
uh, when I, I do travel around the state and I talk to people and we're concerned about many things. But I'll tell you what I'm sensing as I bring this to a close on my part here. What I'm sensing is we are waking up. We are as conservatives and American patriots getting our head in the game. We realize these new world order liberals are trying to catch us off guard. But now we're getting our eyes open and we're getting a mission focused on the target of exactly what we're up against. And baby, let me tell you what, we're on our way and they ain't seen nothing yet. And I think I heard someone trying to make a chat. What was that? USA, 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 USA. You betcha. and the commitment and the patriotism in groups just like this around the state and around the nation, we know we will win this thing and we will hand off to our future generations a free and proud and sovereign America like was handed off to us. It's on our watch and we're going to do it. May God bless each and every one of you for being here today. And may God bless these United States of America. Thank you. Okay. That was a great one. Um, Latricia Jones is a candidate for Senate. I don't know if she's present. If she is anywhere in the crowd, please make your way to the. Please make your way up. Let yourself be known by sight or sound. Not here. All right. Next up, we have Bruce Nathan. Yeah. Bruce Nathan. Thank you. Oh, you killed it. My name is Bruce Nathan. I am your only pro Second Amendment candidate for governor for the state of Florida. Let me tell you why I am, because if you don't elect me, I can guarantee you in November you're going to have that Democrat get into the office and you better believe that your guns are going to get taken away. And who, who here likes Tucker Carlson? Anybody listen to Tucker Carlson? Yeah. All right, well, here's, here's proof from Tucker Carlson. Democrats in your state push, and I'm quoting from the legislation right here, shall seize and take possession of. That's not voluntary, that's mandatory. So you've got hundreds of thousands of people in your state who own weapons that you say are assault weapons. When the Constitution was made, and when the Second Amendment was made, it stated that, of course, the Second, uh, Second Amendment, but let's talk about when it was made. That was when assault rifles, you had to take several minutes to reload an assault rifle. And no, no, now I'm, it's uh, several seconds. Okay, but I, you keep dodging my question, and, and most people do, but I think it's important because we're getting to a point where actual legislation has been sponsored and will be again saying that the government needs to take people's weapons by force. If people want to have assault rifles, join the military. The but what if they don't want to give up their guns? The military. Yes, look, that is why I'm not a child, rifles, okay? I'm an adult. To defend our so, country, I, not to shoot our kids in America. That is what is happening. That is what happened in Portland. I'm that trying is to ask you no questions. You can give up. You can give up. They don't answer the questions. Let me tell you, I have actual experience in this. My son was appointed to West Point. He will be going to West Point in June. He was in the middle of buying an assault rifle, as they call, which is just an MP4. He, he bought it just before Ricky decided to sign on 7026. That gun was being shipped to him. All of a sudden, it gets there. He can't have it because he's only 18. So here's this woman saying, join the military. He's joined the military. He can't even get a gun. Military, military have guns. And we are allowed to have and bear our arms. That's what our Second Amendment says, and that's what we should have happen. There is no reason for this to happen. 
I am a veteran just like you. How many veterans are out there? And that's who we're supposed to elect in our office. You know, there's one gentleman who's a businessman who was not a veteran, who's the best president we ever had. Can I hear it from President Donald J. Trump? I don't hear anybody talking about our great president. He's head on trying to fight everything that's up there and there's not one person talking about our president. So I think he's the man who's trying to stave off everything he can, but he can't do it alone. He needs your help. He needs you to elect somebody into governor's office that will stand up for him, that will stand up not only for your Second Amendment rights, but that's going to stand up for all ten of those constitutional rights, the Bill of Rights. That's what we're all about. As Mike said, as, as uh, two Mikes, he said, that's our Constitution. And we are brought here by God. We've all been brought here by God. I'm being pushed by God to be here so that we can make sure we bring God back in the government and God back in the schools. And if we don't get that done, Again, the Democrats will win, and we lose, and we're all in trouble. And they're going to start taking our weapons. And we can't have that. Second Amendment! Second Amendment! So that Second Amendment has got to stay strong. And we have to make sure we elect people. But it takes, it takes a lot of work. I just announced last week, if you're all veterans here, that, mil that mansion that's down the road over there, a governor will no longer live in the mansion when I'm governor. It will be the veterans that are homeless that are moving in. I, I have concocted a program, it's called 8 for 8. They will move into what I've already called Military Mansion, militarymansion.com. They will move into that mansion and they will get rehab, they will be there for eight weeks, and then we will help them out, get them placed, get another eight week in there. That's what's going to happen with our veterans. These are solutions. These are things we talk about, but nobody puts into action. Bruce Nathan puts everything into action. That's what we need to do. School marshals. We have, we have, my team have school marshals around the state right now guarding our schools. I am a father of six children, and I have to tell you, all of our children are very important to us. They are our legacy. We are destroying that legacy by not guarding them every day. And I am upset that this hasn't happened years ago. I put this out years ago as well. But we can all talk all day for this whole thing, but you know that big march they had up in, up in Washington where they had all those people? heavily funded, that takes money. It takes money to get me into office, it takes money to get your candidate into office. So for all these people that are here, if each of you gave one dollar to Mike and Mike, myself, any other candidate on our websites, you're all helping. Because they're funded by who? George Soros! There you go. I was waiting for that. So we have to make sure that all of the other candidates for governor know how important our Second Amendment rights are. In closing, I want to tell you, there's nothing more important than being here for you. We the people, we are here for each other. And if we don't stand up for each other each day and every time and go against corruption and stand up for our Constitution, that's going to be a problem. I am your general on the war against corruption. I will have boots on the ground. I am just like the military, nine years in the military, and I'll put my boots down and make sure that things get done the way they're supposed to get done. So I want to just say one thing with the time. You all took your time just like I did to come up here. Time is a valuable thing. You can never get it back once you've given it away. So each and every one of you, I personally thank you for coming here and taking your time out of your day away from your family 
to show Florida and the United States who we are and what we stand for. Yeah. Bruce Nathan for governor, thank you. Hey guys. As you see, I'm back now with my voice this time. So, I'd like to thank all you guys who came out today. Our next speaker is Nathan Bro. He's a veteran, he's a victim of gun violence, and he doesn't want anybody to take your guns anywhere. Big round of applause to Nathan, guys. How's it going, guys? I know it's hot. If anybody needs water, I got a nice cooler of ice water over there. I'd be happy to give you some. I know it's hot. Uh, my name is Nathan Bro. I'm an Army veteran. I'm 27 years old. Um, I'm going to start off by uh, start off by telling you guys a little story. Uh, when I was 17, uh, I was at my friend's apartment, and uh, a few gentlemen kicked in the back door and uh, shot me and my friend. Way before that sign, I'm not going to move my camera angle. I'm live streaming. What I'm saying is, you're sitting in front of the word "free." You know, it's really, it's really funny. I was here before the sign was, and I'm live streaming, buddy. It's actually not funny. I'm live streaming. Okay, the sign wasn't here when I got here. Because that happened. This is live right now. I'm feeding. It was my call to change my life. It says guns. Zones, kill zones. It was my call. Uh, they screwed up, put it there. I woke up and I opened yeah, my eyes to the world around me. This is live, man. Right, You're being recorded. All right, thank I you. graduated high school. I went to college. And I joined the military. Because I wanted to serve my country. I changed my entire life because of that one instance. One evil person decided they wanted to take my life. And they failed. Because last time I checked, I'm standing six foot two above the right side of the grass. And I'm proud to say that. Because a lot of people lose, get shot and they lose their life, they die. And I feel for them. But you know what's funny about this upcoming generation and mine? There's a huge difference. People say that I fall in that class being a millennial, and that's not true at all. I think that's a crock of shit. Because I don't relate to them at all because, you know, you know, I joined the military, I went and did something with my life, and last time I checked, they like to play on Facebook and be Facebook warriors and, and with their keystrokes and that's crap. Because I think we're doing something a lot bigger here, right? See, the other side tries to spin a narrative. I'm, I'm a walking oxymoron to them. I'd rather be armed. So that way, if that ever situation ever happens to me again, it's not going to be me in a pine box. I can tell you that. It ain't going to be me. I'm not going to become a statistic because of some ridiculous law that our government seems to think is the best thing for us. Because last time I checked, they work for us. Last time I checked, they work for us. For us. Yeah. We need to remind them of that once in a while. And uh, you know, it's really funny that it's been, a, it's been about a hundred years since we had to do that. And as time draws on, you know, I fear for the worst. I'm going to quote my wife with this statement. It's one of, her, one of her favorite quotes. I don't exactly know where it came from, but it always speaks to me. I pray for peace. But if war should come, let it come in my time, so that my children may live in peace. Like all of you veterans in the crowd, I took an oath to serve and protect, to defend the Constitution, to defend the free people of the United States of America, and every day I do that, whether it be verbally, one-on-one, -on -one, I go out into my community all the time. I'm constantly talking to people. I want their opinion. I want their view. I want to sway their opinion. Because a lot of times their opinion can be twisted. They, all they see is one side. But there are many. There's 30 sides to this equation. And nobody wants to look at the bigger picture. But the bigger picture is, is our rights are being taken from us. They're being stripped one by one. And the infringement on our Second Amendment is, in my eyes, blasphemy. 
We put these people in office, we can take them out. Vote them out. Now I'm gonna, I'm, gonna, I'm gonna touch base on something here really quick. We have several Republicans uh, in office right now who, are, um, who I'd like to refer to as turncoats. Anybody familiar with the term? They say one thing, but once they get there, they do another. Stop voting Republican. Stop voting Democrat. There are other parties out there Vote what you feel is best. Vote with your heart. Vote with your mind. Educate yourselves. Because if I ran for office, I can tell you I wouldn't do it for the money. Because I see a nation that's in distress. It's ridiculous. And the politicians that we entrusted have taken us there. We entrusted something into them, and they have all failed. All of them. Modern day politicians are money makers. That's all they are. And I'm tired of hearing it. Does anybody know, does anybody, can anybody tell me how much, how much a, a retired uh, senator makes? Anybody at all? After they get out of office, they serve their term. Too much. I don't care the dollar amount, it's too damn much. They're public servants. They are public servants. It's a service that they are providing. Why are we paying them so much? Why are we paying them at all? I heard that from the back. That's interesting view. You see, when people start talking about things, all of these views come up. Look at them all. Don't ever close your heart off to someone else's opinion because I listened to them all. I had the liberty of going down and doing an interview with a student from Parkland who was there when the shooting happened. I did it with a, a, a what is it, MIC, Mike? I don't know if any of you are familiar, but they're a pretty, uh, pretty liberal Facebook uh, group. Um, pretty left-leaning, but that's all right, no big deal. I went and did it anyway. And believe it or not, I changed his view on the NRA and the Second Amendment. He has a better understanding of what... Uh-oh. Oh, there you go. <laughs> he has a better understanding of why we have those rights. Why we have the rights we do. And the funny part is, is he's not even from the United States originally. He's from Britain. He's British. But guess what? I told him that it's pretty easy to blame a faceless organization like the NRA. And that statement alone changed his mind because guess what? I am the NRA. The GOA. There you go, there's a good one. I'm an American. NAGR, NAACAP, NAACPA, pardon me. It's been a really long night. Um, I'm nervous. I'm nervous about what these politicians are going to take from us next. Good one, right, guys? I lay awake at night thinking about these things and what my next move is going to be if they do it. If they take it, what am I going to do? What are you going to do? Are you ready for it? Yeah. It's on your doorstep, baby. They're knocking on your door. Don't think that it couldn't happen. Does anybody remember Hurricane Katrina? And what the Army Reservists had to do? The National Guard? And you know what was the They had to go door to door and seize all the firearms that were left behind for people fleeing from the storm. So don't think that confiscation is it happening? Don't think it's not happening, guys. It is. Look it up. It was all over the news. You check your local news outlets for New Orleans. It's there. It happened. And it's happening all over the place. It's just nobody's talking about it. So raise your voice and start talking about it because that's the only way anything's ever going to change. Be active. Be proactive. 
Thank you. Thank you, Nate. Big round of applause for Nate, guys. Come on, come on. There we go. Well, would you like to come up here and introduce me? Okay. So, so now it's my turn to speak because my voice is here and your voice is here. And today we are going to be hard. Yeah. It has been too long that the American law-abiding citizen has been under fire. That our rights have been stripped away, piece by piece. I don't want this standard. It is time that we put boots on the ground like we are here today and rise up. I'm tired of hearing, let's rise up. We rose. You're here today. You rose up. The thing that is going to fix this country verbatim is to get crooked career politicians out of office. It is time to toss the Tories out with the trash. I don't see Republicans, I don't see Democrats, I see Patriots and I see Tories like my founding fathers did. And it's about time we've had enough. Let me get a we the people. We the people. Let me get a we the people. We the people. Shake this ground. We the people. Some of you are listening. <laughs> So I want to talk about this today, which is alarming. Raise your hand if you own a gun store. Oh, where's the Second Amendment industry? Big Daddy Guns is here. Big Daddy Guns is here. Shoot straight firearms got the buses. Where's everybody else? How many gun stores are in your local town? Think about it. 22. I got five of mine. Where are they? I got one of mine. We're here. This way of life, it's not just your constitutional right. What is dangerous to children in schools is far greater than a firearm. It is the future generations that will have their constitutional rights stripped from them. These children will grow up. What country are we leaving for them? That's my question. Piece by piece, everything we hold dear in this country is stripped away from us. Can we all agree on that? Yeah. Piece by piece, the values we hold dear collectively as a nation and our heritage as Americans are being stripped away piece by piece. So my question to you is, what are you gonna do about it? I have people that want to fight. They want to do this. They want to do that. How about we vote them out first? Our elected employees fail to understand that we are watching now. We are watching and we are waiting. Every one of you, I encourage this. You go to the offices of the elected employees in your towns and you speak with them, you grill them, you rally against them. If they do not stand for this country and you as an American citizen and our future generations of children, I'm a father, people. My son will not grow up under a communistic-like regime. Every parent here has to be the one that gets up to go check on the bump in the night. Who are these people to regulate what I check on that with? Because if I don't come back, that don't hurt them. That hurts my son. There's already not enough fathers and mothers in this world standing up. I'll be damned if now we're turned into gun violence victims. I will be damned if every single one of you are not able to protect yourselves because of career politicians and the most dangerous thing, fear-based legislation. So I implore you. I encourage you, I back you, and I will help you. You find me on Facebook, you ask people, my name is James Ledger. I will do my absolute best to help you take the fight, your politicians, and put patriots and people back in this country's offices. 
It is about time they remember that this is a republic. Screw your democracy. It is about time they understand that they carry a voice, not a vote. Mob rule was not in our founders' minds when the articles and amendments were written. Mob rule is what got us to 1776. So folks, long before you get ready for that knock at the door and the fight in your home, take the fight to their office. Thank you all for coming out today. I love everyone. Here. Good, you're good, darling. Thank you for checking. Wow, James. Great. Have you taken a public speaking course? No, and I'm nervous as <laughs> shit. <laughs> Woo! Man. Good job, man. You can't get that in school. You cannot get that in school. All right, next up we have Lieutenant Colonel Jim Dykes, retired, director, Florida Carey. Hey, James, turn around and look back. You inspired me. I don't need this. <laughs> First of all, thank all of you for coming out here. The last count I heard, over 1,200 liberty-loving patriots are here in this park today. I'm going to have a couple of challenges for you today. And here's my first challenge. We're going to do this again. And the next time we do this, I know each of you has at least three liberty-loving friends who aren't here. Get them to the next rally. Let's show them what the gun movement in Florida looks like. Make no mistake, our gun rights are under attack. They're under attack today. We've been asleep too long. We now have retired Supreme Court justices, heads of the Democratic National Committee, the New York Times, and various other publications calling for a repeal of the Second Amendment and calling for the seizure of our firearms. We will not let that happen. I am tired. I am tired of feckless politicians who take away our rights to defend ourselves. I'm tired of politicians claiming that they support the Second Amendment to get themselves elected and then forgetting their promises once they get into the House. I'm tired of them breaking the promises. And you don't have to look any farther than here in the state of Florida and in Tallahassee because they just passed one of the worst anti-gun laws that we've ever had passed. They have now denied the Second Amendment to 18 to 21 year olds in the state of Florida. And it's appalling. It is absolutely a right. I will tell you that right now, there is a 20 year old single mother living in Florida with her young child with an order of protection against her abusive ex-boyfriend who cannot legally in this state go out and buy a firearm to protect her and her child. It's appalling and it was done by this legislature and this governor and we're not going to stand for it anymore. It is, and my only hope, he just yelled out that it's supported by judges. My hope is that we can find either a state or federal judge who has the intellectual honesty and the understanding of the Constitution to put his foot down and say this is wrong and this is unconstitutional and it violates our natural rights as citizens. You heard earlier from some of the speakers, we're not against reasonable restrictions. I don't want convicted felons to have firearms. I don't want the mentally ill to have firearms. But I don't want my rights restricted. I, you know what, man? That's right, in due process. We have enough regulation. I, we do, and I'm tired of these politicians putting their faith in supposed gun-free zones that we've seen do not work. The vast majority of mass shootings happen in these so-called gun-free zones. I'm tired of it. I'm tired of them saying 
they're going to come and take what they call assault weapons. Let me tell you something. Rifles of all kinds commit fewer murders in the U.S. every year than hands, fists, and feet of all kinds. Not just assault rifles, of all kinds. Rifles are not the problem. The problem is the revolving door system that takes criminals and puts them back on the street. The problem is government agencies who were warned that attacks are about to happen and don't act on them. The problem is government agents sitting outside of a school while children are being murdered and not going inside because they're cowering. All of you out here are the last line of defense and the first line of defense. Law enforcement cannot be everywhere. They can't. It is up to us. I'm reminded often of a quote that's often attributed to Rudyard Kipling, and it's actually incorrectly attributed to him, that we sleep peacefully in our beds at night because rough men are willing to do violence on our behalf. I will tell you that there are a few things wrong with that quote. One of them is it's not just rough men because there's women out there that are willing to do violence on our behalf as well. And I will also tell you that those people who are willing to go out and do violence on our behalf aren't all wearing uniforms and they're not all wearing badges. They're standing here on this lawn right now. All right, so I told you the one thing I want you to do. I want you to bring three people the next time we do this. I've got another thing I want you to do. I want you to go out and find a gun right group to join if you haven't joined it. And if you want to join multiple ones, please do. I'm kind of selfish, so I want you to join Florida Carry. But if you don't want to join Florida Carry, find a gun rights group to join. Support them and do what you can. It doesn't have to be financial. You're here showing your presence now. You can write to your legislators. You can call your legislators. There are plenty of things that you can do that will not cost money. But you have to get involved. The anti-gun groups are involved. That's the one thing that they do really well. They get involved. All right, I'm going to walk out of here in just a second. So two final thoughts to leave you with. The first one, a personal statement from me, and this is directed at all of the anti-gun groups that are out there. I hear you guys want to take the weapons from law-abiding citizens. Well, I can be your first one. If you want to seize a weapon, come looking for me, okay? If you're looking for a face of the gun rights movement that you want to attack, I'm your huckleberry. You can come try to see me. The second statement that I have to leave you guys with is there are also groups out there that think that we are going to peacefully surrender our firearms. We, we are not surrendering our firearms. We have a right to keep and bear arms. We have a natural right to defend ourselves against criminals, against terrorists, foreign and domestic, and against a tyrannical government. We will not give up those rights. So for those of you who think that we will give up those rights, I have two words for you, and I think 1,200 people on this lawn have two words for you, and those words are Molan Labe. Thank you again for coming here and showing your support for the gun rights movement here in Florida. God bless each and every one of you for coming here. God bless the great state of Florida, and God bless the United States of America. Virginia. All right, everybody. Let's put your hands together for Virginia Fuller. She's running for Congressional District 5. Hello, Patriots. So happy to see you. I must give you a little, little bit of background about myself. Um, I hope you don't hold it against me. I am a transplant from California. <laughs> All right, I am a legal immigrant. I have been in America for more than 40 years. <laughs> Thank you. I feel at home when 
I'm among my patriot friends, I tell you, in California, it is very, a very hostile environment for conservatives. Um, so I am running for the fifth congressional district, and I am not just a politician. I hate the name, actually. I consider myself a concerned citizen. It was because of circumstances that I experienced running a care home for children with chronic medical condition that I realized that I couldn't be apolitical and just care about being obedient to, to the laws and paying my taxes on time. It was that impetus that uh, invigorated me to uh, begin a political career. So now that I'm no longer in California, um, I again got encouraged by fellow patriots to run again, and there is a good shot that I can be your next congressional representative in the 5th Congressional District because now the district has been redrawn and it's a 50-50, uh, if almost even blacks and white, Republicans and Democrats. And so if we all band together and support the candidate that you believe will represent your values and will be your voice and not renege on their oath of office, then I want to encourage you to support that candidate. Obviously, I believe that I can be trusted. And to give you a little uh, a little story about my experience the last time I ran in California. Um, I was approached by a pro-life group and I agreed to endorse a uh, anti-abortion commercial. The powers that be of the Republican Party approached me and said that I could not support that uh, pro-life commercial because it would, look, it would hurt other candidates and I wouldn't want to uh, walk around with that guilt that they lost because I supported the pro-life uh, uh, commercial. So I had, a I had a decision to make. Will I continue to ask for their donations and, and get their support, or will I go with my conscience? And yes, I am a Christian. I will cling to my Bible and tote my gun because that is my right. So you can you can believe that when I then you send me to Washington, you do not have to be afraid to uh, that I'm going to be a turncoat, that I am not going to be strong enough to stand my ground. I have always been a survivor. I survived that. I, <laughs> I survived the the, um, the death of my parents at a very uh, at a very young age, and um, by all standards, I should have become perhaps uh, a working girl with a train of children behind me. Instead, I become I became a. a, a respected, honest, and I also have two children that both are college graduates. By the way, I have a daughter who is a first lieutenant in the U.S. Marine. <laughs> and so um, I'm here to let you know that win or lose, I will always support the Constitution. I feel so privileged to have come to this country and take part in what white men, I don't care whether they were slave drivers or not, but in their own way, they tried to make the, the wrong right. And they, they wrote the Constitution so that I, a, um, a orphan for, from another country can come and enjoy in the spoils and respect everybody's right and stand up for our flag. So I want your support, but by all means support all the candidates that you believe you can trust to send to the U.S. so that we all together can continue to fight for our freedoms for our flag, for our constitution, and guarantee the next generation of American citizens a free 
and um, a V and what is the other thing that I am looking for? Wrong country. And I, I stand behind. Well, folks, it's about all my stream for today. I might get back on later, but uh, I think I'm done. Got the PTP shirt on. You know. Thank y'all for watching. Share this. Press pass. Also, while we're here,